What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Charles is an Idiot. This is the show where we talk about how I'm dumb and made a really bad mistake and why I have two differentials sitting in front of me instead of just one. And rather than try and explain what I did, well, you can watch for yourself. In taking down this differential, which is the one that came out of the Black R32, I missed a very key step in the repair manual to remove one snap ring on this plate right here, which resulted in this cover going kaboom. And of course I didn't trust my God on, hey, this doesn't feel right, Charles. Uh, you should stop. I just went ahead on pumping. And when you keep pumping on that 20 ton press, something's gonna give. Thankfully, Brian at One Love had a used diff, so luckily I don't have to try and find a 300 something dollar cover that is no longer available. So we're gonna be doing the limited slip differential install on this diff, but I got this one apart. So let's talk about the disassembly process minus the step I missed, don't do that, and some of how this works. Lucky for me, I already filmed that, so a travel back in time. Let's see how it comes apart. So here's our rear drive unit. The back portion right here is the differential. The front here is the Haldex unit, or on the newer stuff, a board. Warner unit, but this one still says Halidex, so that's what we're gonna call it. This is our controller, here's our filter right back here, and this is the pump that pumps the fluid right here on the bottom. We'll start by getting that filter off. Now in order to get that filter off, you need a wrench that looks similar to this. Now we don't need this special one when we have it all apart. This is actually angled properly so you can do all this stuff while the Haldex and diff is installed in the car. Probably lose a bit of fluid here. So just a tiny little filter there. The pump's held in with two T25 Torx and one electrical connector. In order to get the pump all the way out, you gotta rotate it a little bit clockwise. And then if you kind of wiggle it back and forth, you can get it enough to get a screwdriver back behind it and pry it out. We're also probably gonna lose some fluid here. Here we go. There's actually a special slide hammer tool that you're supposed to use in order to get it out, but we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna inspect this screen here at the end for any kind of metal debris buildup or yuck. And if you see that, just go ahead and clean that all out. That way when we go back together with it, it's not just a partial filtering. So we'll set this to the side and we'll clean it right before we go back together with it. But as you can see, most of that stuff just wipes right off. If you have a ton of metal trapped in this screen, odds are you might have a more severe Haldex issue and you'll probably want to get that taken care of. Next, we're going to take the Haldex controller off the side here, two four millimeter Allen screws. So this little guy right here is our controller. Also, I'm looking at this gasket here and looking at like, it's kind of sad. And then remembering that I had a similar gasket that I didn't know what it was for in the box of parts that came with this R32. So check it out. I think this gasket is that gasket. So we already got a new gasket, which saved me probably like $2, but hey, I'll take it. Next, I'm gonna try and pull this drain plug out. Now, typically you wanna take the fill plug out first. That way, if you can't get the fill plug out, you don't take the drain plug out and drain all the fluid. We gotta get this out either way, so if some weird reason we can't get one of these two out, we're gonna have to make do. That one luckily came off somewhat easy. The fill plug is a six millimeter in a plastic housing, so hopefully this comes out pretty easily. Why did you just say that, Charles? Okay, it came out pretty easy. Whew. Bullet dodged. Now we're gonna lay this down, drain whatever fluid's left, which is not really any. I'm gonna go ahead and take the cover off the side here next. Ooh, look at that nasty fluid coming out of there. We are making a mess. We know we gotta at least get one new bolt, but we'll probably just end up cleaning this entire thing out and getting the new seal if we can and four new bolts. Next up, we gotta remove this nut right here because this whole assembly is gonna come off before we take the Haldex off of the diff. Now, there's a special tool that you're supposed to bolt on here that holds this unit while you break it loose. I don't have that exact tool, but I'm gonna test drive using our fan coupler bolt tool. That's what you needed. That. Had a bunch of red Loctite on it. Okay, next we gotta get this flange off. Now, the way that you're supposed to do this is with a three-fingered puller piece. I gotta be honest, I don't love the idea of like grabbing it the way that you're supposed to grab this, according to the repair manual. So we're gonna give that a shot, and man, I hope we don't break. Uh, I don't care too much about the puller. Like, I don't wanna break the puller, but I definitely don't wanna break this flange. And let's hope for the best here. 
Oh, luckily that's not, <laughs> oh, I'm pretty happy about that. It's not like smash pressed in there. Oh, I'm so relieved. Next, we need to get this front cover off. Four 15 millimeter bolts. Give this front cover a little tap. Then we can use the two knot screwdriver method to hopefully get it the rest of the way off. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, well, I don't think these things were supposed to come out with that. Okay, well, <laughs> that's all out. I don't think this was supposed to come out with this, but it did. So luckily the only thing that fell out was two of these little roller bearings here. All the rest of the stuff stayed in place. So um, yeah, I guess we're good there. Okay, it looks like our next step is removing this clutch stacks out of here. We got a 90 degree pick. We'll just go back behind it. Hopefully we can pull it all out as one unit and nobody gets out of place. Okay, gently, got it and got it. Okay, so there is our clutch stack. We gotta get this lined back up before we go back together with it. Luckily, everything looks pretty happy in here, so that's good. There's a little bit of wear right here on this metal part. Not something I'm gonna worry too terribly much about. It's important to make sure we keep this all in order. We don't want these getting out of place because it's probably steel plate, clutch plate, steel plate, clutch plate. So there's actually one of these teeth on this outer ring that's flat and that has to go in a little gap right there. So I'm gonna hold it like this. I'm gonna walk away. I'm gonna magically, after an unknown amount of time, come back with zip ties, because we're gonna zip tie this all together to avoid any potential catastrophe. All right, now we have our Haldex clutch pack all safe and sound. Our next step is to take off these series of bolts that hold the Haldex unit to our differential unit. This is probably the part that I'm the most uneasy about as far as removing hardware, so we're gonna Douse these with some penetrant. We'll break out some heat if we have to. Next up, we're gonna separate the Haldex case from the diff case. In order to do that, you're gonna need two M8 by 125 bolts. This upper case has two spots for these bolts to thread into. If this were installed in the car, one of them would be right about four o'clock, which is this one here. The other one would be right about 10 o'clock, which is this one here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread these in to these holes here. Probably also wanna grab a pick, make sure these aren't all full of yuck so that you can actually thread the bolts in. We wanna kinda of tighten these in stages together so that one side isn't all the way tight and one side isn't completely loose. And what this is doing is it's acting like a little press to press these two pieces apart. All right, well that came off, awesome. Okay, next up, we gotta get this fluid out of here, which is probably gonna be a mess, but let's see if we can do the least messy job of it. Get his, oh, don't, oh, it's falling, it's full. Okay, ah, oh boy, oh goodness. Charles, what's happening? There we go. We'll be right back with this. So it's gonna make a mess. And we're back. <laughs> let's clean up this mess. What are you doing, bro? I gotta say, for, for 200K uh, and completely unknown maintenance with that 200K, um, yeah, it doesn't look all that bad. Next, we need to get our axle flange off. There is a special tool, right, shockingly, that you use to press this off. It kind of mounts up here and here, and then you actually just pull the cup loose that way it has two bolts that thread into it. So what we're gonna do is something actually kind of similar. I'm gonna put two bolts in across from each other. Need to make sure these are the same thread pitch as the axle bolt. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lay a bar across here. Now when we drive this bolt in, it's going to actually push the cup backwards. There we go, all right. That was more work than I expected it to be. 
but if we didn't have this extra cup on here, it would have been no problem. Next, we're gonna take these bolts out here. Now, similar to how we did with the Haldex case, we have two bolt holes right here that we're gonna use to press this cover off. All right, that is a victory. Bearing looks pretty good. You can see a little tiny bit of unhappiness, but I don't even think that's enough to worry about even replacing. Now we might actually from here be able to pull this unit out, maybe. All right, here is this next section here. It's like there's some yuck on this side of the case, but not on this side. This is the bottom side, so this is where fluid would just sit and collect. We'll get all that cleaned out of there. We're gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side. The right side or passenger side is a shorty one. All right, same as before, remove all the bolts. Okay, here is our non-limited slip differential unit. I don't know the maintenance history of this car, if it's ever actually had a, uh, a diff service or not. Now for this part right here with the actual differential on it, we are going to need to press these two pieces apart. So off to the press to use the press. The only real concern here is I wanna be careful not to damage any of the points of the cover. We're gonna be replacing the differential portion, so that's not a huge deal. But either way, we wanna be careful and make sure we don't damage anything. I'm not happy about that at all. Not at all. Okay, now that we have that crisis not averted, we actually still at least have everything taken apart. Let's start with the differential side because I think this side is a lot easier to understand and easy to show. So this is our differential basically as it sits in the car. If we had the case installed, it would sit like this. We pull our case off and this is what we have. Our axles bolt here and then we have our wheel hubs and our wheels would be like way wider than my arms. So these are the main components. This is just where our axles bolt up. This is the gear that is driven by the gear through the Haldex unit supported by a bearing on each side. And then there's actually another bearing that goes right here. It's the ball bearing that's pressed on part of which what I exploded. This can work as one unit. Everything's connected. Our wheels are going forward at the same speed and it kind of does this number right here. Then what we have is our wheels turning different speeds, either this wheel turning faster or this wheel turning faster. This is a very dramatic interpretation. These spider gears inside of this unit allow these two pieces to turn at different speeds. So as we turn a corner and our inner wheel is turning a different speed as our outer wheel, these gears compensate for that and allow the car not to go j -j 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 around a corner. The part that we're gonna replace is this piece right here with a limited slip differential, which means that it allows it to have that open rotation up into a certain point, and then it'll actually start to lock them together and act more like a solid diff. Now this stuff's pretty basic as far as its assembly goes. It's held in with splines and snap rings on each one of the pieces. So this is going to be one axle flange. Here's our diff. This is our other axle flange that connects all the way through to the diff. Now this is actually not splined to the shaft that goes through it because the diff is splined to this piece like that. And then the axle is also splined to the diff kind of like that. So this doesn't need to be splined to this directly. It's kind of indirectly splined. As far as diffs go, about as basic and simple as you're gonna get. The interesting part of this whole rear end assembly is actually the Haldex unit, which is the all wheel drive controller. Okay, these are basically all of the parts and bits from our Haldex unit. Now let's kind of work backwards from the back of the car to the front of the car, and then we can get some of this stuff out of the way. So this was our piece that we had that was splined in with the essentially the rear axle. So this is drive and driven, similar to a ring and pinion on like most four wheel drive or rear wheel drive cars. They kind of ride like this. This gear, when it rotates, drives this gear, 
right here. Then all the other stuff on the rear axle is driven and that's how we get the rear wheels to be powered. What we're left with is essentially the Halidex unit or the all wheel drive control unit. So the way this sits in the car is sort of like this. Then all these pieces here live inside of this housing. This housing is pretty basic. It's the housing for all these stuff. It's this gear back here at the back, some bearings in it. There's some oil passages. It also houses our motor for the fluid. The important thing here is we have a shaft inside of here that is splined. And those splines are gonna spline up to the middle section of our clutch pack right here. Now we're left with the main guts of the Haldex system. So this is our front cover here. Inside of here are the oil passages and the oil control valves that actually actuate the all wheel drive. So as fluid pressure is applied, it actually pushes this piston right here. We can move this back in to right here. And that pushes this down really, really hard. When that happens, your phone rings and you answer your phone. When that piston is pushed down, what it does is it squeezes our pack of clutches here. So these clutches ride inside of here. Now this is a bunch of different parts, but kind of two main things. We have our inner part, our inner splined part, which is this. This gear is locked. When I say splined, I mean locked to the shaft inside the case. These here function a lot like either a DSG clutch pack or a regular automatic transmission clutch pack. We have friction discs and we have steel plates. The steel plates, the steel plates are internally splined. So the splines are here. So when they go over this piece that splines to that shaft, they're also locked in place. They're going to turn infinitely together till it fails anyway with this gear right here and then in turn with that spline shaft. The friction discs, however, are externally splined. So rather than being splined to the gear that the steel sh plates are splined to, it's splined externally to our drum right here. So what that means is when fluid pressure is not applied to our piston here, it's not pushing down on this section here, it's not squeezing these really tight, this gear essentially just free spins inside of this drum. But when fluid pressure is applied and it squeezes these clutches really, really hard together, it locks all these parts together and makes for one rotating mass. Now there's probably some slippage built in. It's probably not 100% lock. Essentially, that's how you can achieve sometimes no all-wheel drive engagement. And sometimes I think it's up to like 47% all-wheel drive engagement. And what we do with a tune or an upgraded controller is we increase how much pressure and how fast or how soon that pressure is applied to give us a more thorough all wheel drive system. Now I have also seen, actually it was really, really cool. Some dude in Italy actually designed a replacement for this entire clutch pack here. That's one solid unit, which means that it's permanently splined from this drum, which this is attached like that. And this bolts to the prop shaft to our output side here, which drives our ring and pinion gear. So you have a more full-time, actually, I guess a complete full-time all-wheel drive system instead of something like this, which let's be honest, we call fake all-wheel drive for a reason. Now, short of a pump motor failing, this is actually a pretty good system and it works really, really well for what it is. All right, now that we understand how all these goodies work, um, we're gonna put a limited slip differential into this one. Now, I haven't quite figured out whether I'm going to completely strip this all out and vapor hone or powder coat or any of that stuff with this whole rear end unit. My gut says what'll probably happen is we'll just wire wheel it, clean it up as best I can and put it back in the car. What we can do while we're, when we have this apart is we can inspect things like our bearings and see if maybe we actually do need to put some new bearings in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by taking off this axle flange right here on the passenger side. You may remember from the last disassembly, there's a special tool, but we're gonna do it this way. Now this one should come off because we don't have that axle end cup on it. So we're gonna do the same thing. Next, we will unbolt our flange here, probably lose a ton of fluid, get our little catch tray right there. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to take the same two bolts that we used on the other diff, and we're gonna run them in evenly into these holes 
here and up here at the top. You wanna try, if you can, to get these holes cleaned out. I'm noticing now this backside here is starting to crack open just a little bit. So we should be pretty close on the front side too. Ooh, that sounded nice. Now we actually are gonna have to take off both of our axle flanges. And the reason is, is about right here into our diff, uh, this longer axle flange actually has a circlip that goes into the diff and we have to overcome that tension of the circlip, which is not that big of a deal. We're just gonna do exactly like we did with the other one. We'll use our bolt and our little bar, or in this case, a wrench. Now we got this guy out. Boom, now, now I was trying to cheat the system and I couldn't. Now we can pull this guy out and here is our non-limited slip differential. Also, differential fluid, especially when it's bad, is the worst smell in the world. Prove me wrong if you don't believe that because it's awful. So now we're gonna pick up where I made my dumb, dumb mistake on the first one. Behind that axle flange is a seal. What we're gonna do is we need to remove this seal because behind it, there's actually a snap ring that we need to get out. So we'll use this seal remover and be real careful. Now we have access to this snap ring. We'll get the snap ring out. Then we'll take this unit over to the press and it should press out super, super simple. Unlike the last time where I completely exploded the unit. And then when we go back together, we'll clean this all up with a wire wheel or something like that. So our new seal, is gonna go in much nicer than this one came out. You definitely wanna make sure you replace both ends of these seals. You might be able to get away with not doing the other side. However, this one, um, you, pretty much, you pretty much need to replace. Now you also may be able to fiddle a pair of snap ring pliers in there in order to get it out. However, if you're spending $1,200 on a limited slip differential, don't cheap out. I think these are like $25, $30, so they're not cheap, but I'd hate for you to get it all the way put back together just to find out that you got a leaking axle flange seal. This, however, is the limited slip differential that's gonna be going in the car. As you can see, they're very much the same size. They spline in pretty much exactly the same. This one just has all the gears enclosed in its housing. It doesn't have these spider gears that uh, you can actually see. Now, unfortunately, some of the parts that I had for this reassembly are back ordered, so I can't finish this job and putting it back together. Now my question to you guys is, do you want a step-by-step -step DIY on this? You can actually do this part while the whole diff is in the car. Obviously it's not as easy as doing it here on the bench, but it beats taking it out of the car in order to just replace this piece. When we look at this case, it looks terrible especially when we're doing all the other work on this car and have some parts that look beautiful, this case looks like trash. What I'm actually gonna do with it at this point, I'm not sure. Vapor honing is very attractive. That should restore this back to that really nice, like new aluminum finish. That's kind of where I'm leaning. To do that, I will have to disassemble the whole thing. I'm not in love with taking the Halidex apart. There's some special tools that I don't have and actually the dealership doesn't have either in order to get that whole case apart to where I would feel comfortable sending it somewhere that's going to use any kind of media to clean it off. Now you will need the press going back together as well. Something else you could try is putting the diff in the freezer, putting the cover in something like a toaster oven. I have a powder coat oven that I might throw it in. And that'll create a pretty big temperature difference, shrinking down the diff, expanding out the bearing of the cover with the roller bearing inside, and it might sort of slide together. If not, I'll just press it together. It's not that big a deal. You saw how easy it came apart. Uh, when I'm not being stupid. So uh, it should be a super simple press together thing. Now, as a treat for sticking around to the end, that's something I don't think I've actually posted on YouTube yet, some of the color strategy that I'm going with with the car. So this was powder coated, this beautiful purple. And uh, this is one of the only like non-engine parts that, uh, that are going to be powder coated any kind of color. So this is gonna sit right back here on the back of the diff like this. Uh, yeah, definitely like this, or maybe, no, nope, definitely like this. So this is gonna live right back here, which is why I don't want this to be all nasty and ugly, and this be this beautiful, beautiful purple color. So we'll get some level of cleanup. In fact, if you guys have any suggestions on how we can get this cleaned up without having to disassemble it, please let me know. Uh, that would be mad helpful, because like I said, I don't want to take everything apart if I don't have to, but I do want it to look at least a little bit better than it does now. So with that, I'm out. Have an awesome day. I'm excited about this too, boy, how pretty is this? Uh, have an awesome day.
I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.